Sky Science Partnership, BSSP, partners K-8 schools, tribal communities, and institutions of higher education to strengthen elementary science education in Montana. The BSSP professional learning community consists of teachers and tribal advisors from the Flathead, Northern Cheyenne, and Crow Reservation, and Missoula area K-8 schools, and science education faculty from the Salish Kootenai College, the University of Montana, and Montana State University. In particular, the BSSP strives to improve teachers' cultural competence in teaching American Indian students in order to increase Native students' science achievement. Um, this, this program is the summer culture camp for the Big Sky Science uh, program, and it involves reservation teachers uh, from the public schools and also teachers from Missoula and from the University of Montana. And uh, the whole program is uh, directed at getting teachers to understand more about Indian culture. And part of that is because uh, there are such a, a low rate of Indian students that, that go into the science fields and math fields. So this will help teachers to make a connection with those Indian students and while also being just a better teacher overall, better science teacher. So these three days, is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we've had um, tribal, tribal presenters and elders involved with all these teachers. There's about 80 some teachers and I think we have around 10 stations located at the People Center and at uh, SKC. An uh, example of a few of those were, are uh, Indian ice cream making where the instructor, two, there were two instructors taking turns, Agnes Kayai and Sadie Selway. They uh, made Indian ice cream out of buffalo berries or foam berries, there's a different names for it. I know in Salish the word for um, that is called schosum, schosum. And uh, I was told the name in Kootenai, but I forgot it. I don't want to mispronounce it. So. so the teachers went there and they sampled some of it. They seen how it was made and they know what plant it comes from. And also Sadie Sawai also demonstrated making a whip to whip it up with out of bear grass, and I've never seen that part before. And there are also people making dry meat. We had a hunter that would got meat every day. Well, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, Andy Woodcock was there with his sisters and his wife, and they made the dry meat, and the teachers had a chance to taste the dry meat, and also to have a try their hand at cutting and slicing dry meat. And Andy also told him some of the traditional practices uh, with hunting and a lot of the background with uh, uh, the spirituality part of it. Um, there was also Tim Ryan with his uh, traditional skills of uh, fire making, making rope with hemp, you know, and uh, cordage. And I can't remember all the things, he had many things that he's doing. Um, and Jay Labor here behind us with the class that are making at Lattles, and also flutes. Um, he's an he's a artist here, he does a metal sculpture and he works here at SKC. And you can hear they're having a good time back there and they're all working very hard. And we had Tonka Howard uh, working with Rawhide making flutes. I mean, I'm sorry, not flutes, I'm sorry, parfleshes. And um, Tim Ryan's sister, Sean Ryan, going through the process of high tanning with them and, and just giving them background work. And she was taught by Ushini Kenmill and, and she has really turned her work into artistry. Her, her hides are beautiful and Ushini would really smile if she could see the work that Sean's been doing. And we've also had um, Aggie and Kashola making Yaya dolls. And I'm trying to think of all. Gloria Trahan making pine needle baskets. Phyllis Matthias doing beadwork with the teachers. 
and all of these the teachers really get into it and they just really love it and we're just hoping that they'll feel more relaxed around elders and and be more open-minded to to Indian cultures so that when they have Indian students they feel more more accepting and and more open that they don't see that there is a difference between students and they understand more about Indian culture and that's that's what we're trying to promote here and um, the teachers here seem very receptive and a lot of them this is more than like their second year here some it's their third year but they're um, they're all they're all doing very well and we're having a, a good time and it, we seem out to be giving back and forth here beat him just because he has more finesse in how he shoots. The Adelaide is taking the place of the strength. You don't need a lot of strength. You need more finesse than you do strength. Uh, usually when I do like high school people, um, girls do better than guys do. Guys go out there and try to muscle it and, do, you know, and that actually throws them off when they're doing that. Girls tend to go out and have a little more finesse down, so they actually shoot better the first few times around and make the guys feel better. I'm all for that. Let's get it. Can we drag just a little bit? Oh, we need a string? I did take that test. <laughs> <laughs> get your, well, here, get your string in there and we'll put her, <laughs> her on. You gotta really, yeah, be really tight and twist it. Okay. Here's that little tool there. Making an adult apple, Uh-huh. So before we made these darts, which we learned are darts rather than arrows, with a weighted tip and a dull point and a rounded shaft, which we had to make from a square piece because he said that you can't get dowels this long to be straight and then it has a couple of um, these guys on them pure veins fletching so some fletching on the end and now we're making a part that launches the arrow and we're hoping to learn how to launch it <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> We're teachers. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait. Get that hand out in front of that blade. Okay. Okay. And don't try with it. Nope. Yeah. No, so it's it's it. farther down there. So you don't okay. Are you right hand or left hand? I'm right. Okay. I'm gonna take this in my right hand. I'm gonna get it where I want it. Your so, stronger than our finger. I've decided. No, no. We're gonna push that right down there. Now I'm not gonna push with the blade end. I'm just going to very lightly guide and oh. scoop. I don't want to scoop out a whole bunch at once. Oh, okay. The trick is to just do a little bit at a time. You're not going to get a whole bunch at once. And what are the grooves for? The, when the we wood. put that in there and oh. we put a leather on that, that's going to allow you to tighten and loosen and stay in the slot. If okay. you just put leather around that after a while, it's going to move over oh, here and over okay. there. So this, this is just making a slot for that rope okay. to slide. And see right here, you can, hear, can, can you hear the grain? Yes. Okay, so we're going to turn the wood around. Oh, go across the grain? No, go with the grain. With the grain. Okay? Oh. And people don't realize how fast a grain of a wood can change. You notice that way we went this right. way? Right, I didn't this realize This way we had to that. turn it around and go the other the way. Cool. So when you're carving or doing any kind of wood carving, you need to be aware of which way the grain is going and changes. Okay, now you got your little piece of leather? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, no, remember what I said? You have to wrap it. It has to go all the way around, Once, about a half left. inch thick. And then you'll be ready. To, you should be pointing right at your target. So we put it in there, reach forward, bring it back. Now at this point, everything needs to be forward motion. You don't want to step back like that and bring it back. As soon as you do that, you've lost your target. Another thing is, you don't want it up in the air like that. If you can't see your end of your dart, you don't know where it's going to go. So we want it down where we see it, looking at our target, keeping our eye on our target, bring it back, and everything from there now is forward motion. Whoa. Like that? Yeah. So it's all forward motion.
Would have been good if it hit it, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even looking at the target. I just wanted to see if it fly. You know, I hit me too. Well, actually, it should be like this. Oh, okay. So, middle finger, thumb. That's, that's down fine. You can round that off if you want. Just round that off. I mean, we didn't do that. So, these three fingers stay down, and then when you pinch forward. Okay. okay. So then now, after you have that, you will be grabbing the bark itself. Okay. And see how my finger is right behind there? Mm -hmm. Let let the bark follow. Let your finger follow right behind that bark, and that helps for a cleaner release off of that woody part. Just go down about two or three inches. Good. And then break it over your finger again. And discard that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, and just keep on doing that technique all the way down your stock here. And this is the best best way to kind of get the best um, release of those fibers off. So that's my mic. Yeah, all my contact information. Okay, email yeah. is the best way because that's okay. Okay. You know, I'm looking for, you know, 12, 13, you know, 13 on. Apparently the back. They went to Kid Fest. So what are you making here? Park. Except our. I really enjoyed it. No! There it is. Give me my knife back. Ah! I got your knife, yes. I was looking for my knife over there. And she's cutting on a metal table with my knife. <laughs> Did you get that on film? <laughs> This is the wood is for. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. That was yeah. Wow. Wow. You know. Scissors to make it. Yeah. 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 Yeah
let's see. Well, you still got see that right there. Right there? The fact that I can still see that means that it's not quite sharp. So you want to down that. So that's nice. But see how that's, I still got space between that file. So what we want is no no space. So we're going to go right up to it. Okay. Back and forth. See how we're getting closer to it. There we go. A little bit closer. See that little gap there. I want to get rid of that little gap. Okay, that gap is gone. Still got to clean it out just a little bit. Another thing I'm looking at when I look at this is I can see that it's not quite flat here. See that little edge? Look in the light. Look in the light. See that like edge? That, me that means you've gone up like the, with that file. You went up and down. Okay. You need to go straight across. Okay. So file it and see, also see this right here? See this curve? And see this curve? You want that nice and parallel right there so everything's flat. Okay. The fact that this is curved and this is curved means that there's a bow in there okay. and that's where your airs are stuck. Okay. So you need to file that down just a little bit better. This one do you have a... If it toots, then we can tune it. Tunes a little bit, we're losing air in here. See all that air? No, see that plug in there? Oh yeah. See all that light around the plug? That's where all your air is going. Okay. So basically all we need to do now is glue that and seal that air around there and then we can plate on. My name is Rose Garuli. I'm a student at SKC. I'm a member of the Big Sky Science Partnership. Uh, right now I am working on a PVC pipe flute that we drilled the holes in, measured it based on the widths of our hands and stuff. So right now I'm just painting it. Um, this is my last year at BSSP. I've done two uh, courses and summer work last year and the year before and I'll be done after these three days. Um, I have to say, being in BSSP, mo probably more of the two previous years, um, I was able to come in contact with a lot of uh, really intelligent, knowledgeable people, especially elders, um, Pat Pierre being one of them, and some, some uh, different Kootenai elders that uh, are just really insightful and, and, and say things that are, you know, uh, are just priceless and it makes you realize kind of uh, what a lifetime of being on this reservation and and different experiences can can teach you and I, I found a lot that um, the people that are here and that are helping and sh sharing their experiences though they've been super painful have um, they've taken good things out of them and can can find ways to make them funny and uh, my name is Sean Ryan and uh, I'm here at SKC uh, attending a conference for teachers, um, math and science teachers from this area and the Missoula area. Um, they've come here to learn about native cultures and traditions and life ways and um, I was invited here to teach about hide tanning. Um, I have to acknowledge my teacher, Ushini. Um, I'm here because, because she did her work in her lifetime, and so it's a great honor to be able to sit here and do the work that she did in this little hut that she worked in and taught many, many people. So um, I acknowledge her and send her my love and gratitude. So I do this work in honor of her and the past, the future and especially right now so that we can have a future in hide tanning. So this part here that I'm working on is I'm just getting it ready for a softening and uh, it's almost ready for brains but this isn't the first step. We uh, To tan a hide there's many many steps and of course you have to get it off the deer first and uh, when you get it off the deer you got to make sure that that you're uh, doing a really good job of skinning it and that uh, you're not using your knife too much and nicking it up and putting holes in it. Um, so whenever I can I try to skin my own deer because that way I'll be sure to get a nice hide. So when you uh, get that skin off the deer then you take it to this um, pole here 
and, um, and then you scrape off all the fat and all the meat and make sure that it's nice and clean on that side. Um, and you go ahead and stick it in a bucket and, and let it soak in that water for an, anywhere from two to three days, however long it takes for that hair to start sloughing off and um, being ready to take that, take your uh, draw knife. And uh, Ushini used to use a sickle. And uh, a long time ago, they used to use uh, rib bones and uh, cannon bones from animals, uh, from deer. But today we use our modern tools and um, so I take my draw knife and I use it to take off all the hair and all the grain. So at that time when you, for me it can take quite a while because I like to do a really good job of getting all that grain off. Um, then after you take all the hair off you're going to take and soak it up again and get it ready for uh, wringing and twisting. And then I take it over to a, a beam and I have a stick and there's a special way of wrapping it up and rolling it up so that you get a really good twist on it. And you're trying to take out all the moisture that you can so that um, you can take all the moist mucus sticky stuff out, out of the fibers of the hide. So that, that can take a long time. You can maybe have to twist a, and wring a hide and dry it out maybe three times before it's ready for brains. Depends on the hide. If it's, if it's a big hide or if it's a little hide. There's a lot of variables there. Um, once you uh, have a hide like this, this one has been wrung and stretched many times and it's a, it's a big hide. It's got a really thick neck, but it's starting to get really soft and um, starting to let me know that it's going to be soon ready for brains. So when you're ready, well, this hide is going to be uh, drying up a little bit more and uh, I'll take my brain solution and that's just brains and water. And Ushni used to sometimes put uh, powdered eggs in her solution. Uh, once you're at that point, you stick your hide in, in the brains and, and then the brains, they'll soak in there. I like to put them in overnight, but sometimes it can be just maybe an hour or two hours. Again, it just depends. So once it's done soaking, uh, you put it back on the beam and take your stick and wring it out again and start softening. When you take it off that pole, then you're going to soften it again until it's all the way dry. And sometimes a hide will start getting stiff spots in its haunches and in its neck and certain areas and then that's telling you that you know you're going to need to put it in the brains again and let it soak over one more time and then uh, wring it out again. So hopefully that time you'll have enough brains in there and, and when you start to dry it out and stretch it, wring it out again. So. Hopefully that time you'll have enough brains in there and, and when you start to dry it out and stretch it and pull it, um, it'll soften really nice for you. And at that point you'll have a white hide by the time you're done. Maybe after six or eight hours in a hot, hot, hot room you're sitting with your hide pulling and stretching. With Oceani, it was good because we were all working together and we all helped to stretch each other's hides. We'd all grab an end of the hide and everybody was pulling and twist, twisting on the hides. Uh, for me, when I'm tanning by myself, I, uh, I have to have other tricks to do because I don't have a lot of people help to pull. So I use something like this called a staking post and that helps me put a lot of pressure on the fibers and open things up. It's just one of the many things that you can do while you're stretching and twisting. The other things you can do is put it over your knees like this and pull and open it up every direction that you can, not forgetting any area, especially the neck and the haunches and the backbone. Those areas get kind of tight sometimes. So then, after your hide is all dried out, you're ready to uh, put it on a frame like this one behind me. And you put it on the frame and uh, make it nice and tight and uh, take a, a lid on a can and you scrape and scrape and scrape and scrape on that side and that makes it nice and fluffy and uh, 
it makes it lay flat and straight and uh, so then you'll turn the frame over and then brush the back down as well and then you're ready to take it off the frame and uh, you have a nice white hide and at that point you can leave it white or you can choose to smoke it up and uh, to smoke it up you take a your hide and you you fold it in half um, make a bag out of it in a way take it from the neck to the tail like that and then you're gonna sew up the edge but leave one end open the neck end and on that end you're gonna sew a skirt a denim skirt on it and um, that skirt is what protects the hide when you stick it over your your wood stove pipe or your um, your with Oceany we uh, smoked in a little metal bucket the smoke will move up inside that sack and um, the sack will uh, hold in all that smoke and you can have it on that smoker half an hour to an hour depending on how dark you want your hide um, then you'll take it off that uh, smoker and turn the hide inside out and smoke the other side and then uh, pretty much after that you take it off the the pipe and rip open the sewing and then there you have your hide it's all done